Hello everyone and welcome back to the Keep Productive YouTube channel. It is your host Francesco. In this video we will be diving into Asana. Now Asana is a project management software that can be used on web, iOS and Android. We will be touring the application today, giving an idea of the features, also the pricing and who this is most suitable for. Now before we begin, we will be using this on the free plan. But if you want any information about pricing and details, you can find it below because it typically changes quite often. And you can utilize the timestamps below as well if you want to skip ahead to a certain feature or category, we really don't mind. So as you can imagine, Asana is used pretty uh, widely. It was created by one of the Facebook um, co-founders, um, Dustin Moskovitz, I believe his name is. And uh, it is used uh, with hundreds of thousands of teams, even probably millions of teams. And it's normally one of those apps that it's recommended as a sort of go-to. Now we will be using the free plan as I mentioned, which includes a range of different viewing options, including tasks, lists, boards, and calendar view. And you can add up to 15 members to your area. So that's the members area here. Now there is a premium plan, which is priced at $9.99 if you paid for it annually or $11.99 if you pay for it monthly and that's per user per month and that includes a range of different abilities like timeline, advanced search, also you've got the ability of templates, workflow rules and messages as well. Now inside of the free account you do get integrations but I believe you get more inside the premium account but we will tally all of this information below so you guys can go away and review it yourself. So here we are inside of a Asana account. Now I'm viewing this on web. So as you can see, we've created a key productive workspace. And what we're gonna do in this sort of demonstration is actually we're gonna try and utilize a new project for planning a course that we have coming up. So up here, what you can do is once you created a workspace, uh, and a workspace is essentially, if you go to the top right hand corner, you can create a workspace from here, or you can actually remove yourself from the workspaces. And once you have an Asana account, uh, you can create different workspaces, and obviously a workspace is almost like having a, a different area for each of your projects. Now, I will show you near the end the Dototech one we have, or Steve invited me to, so I can show you sort of around an actively working one, but we're gonna set this one up now. So you can see here that I can go ahead and create a new project. And as you create a new project, uh, what happens is you get a range of different templates to get you started and what's quite nice about Asana is you do have some really good ones some are locked under premium but if you want to do search for a specific department for example if you wanted a marketing one or an operations one or HR one you can really drill down uh, in this case we're probably actually going to go with um, some form of product project plan um, and the good thing is um, they actually include Sprint and a range of different Agile uh, options. So if you guys are actually wanting to use it, that's great. So you can just go with a blank um, project if you want. And you can even have a specific like one-to-one -one meeting agenda. But you can also import tasks from spreadsheets. So if you've got a CSV or an Excel file that you want to import, then you can do so. But in this case, we're going to go with the product project management. Now, the good thing is before you fully commit, you can see what that looks like so that you don't necessarily make a decision on using using that template um, and get sort of tripped up halfway through. Uh, now, they've got the available features. So, for example, this will be available in list, board and calendar view, which is plenty for me. And as you can see, premium is locked under the timeline function. So let's go ahead and press use template. Now, we're going to rename this one. So in this case, we're going to call it um, new course and we're going to title it the to-do course or to-do list uh, chooser uh, and then you can either choose the privacy to be public to everyone and keep productive or private to me now uh, this is sort of where I guess the premium comes in handy because you can be very specific about who you invite in this case there's only two members of the team so we're going to go ahead and create a new project now, a new project will be available on the side here. So you can click in and uh, obviously once you're in, you can uh, drop away the main bar at the sidebar. And it almost looks like a Google document, but it's a lot more powerful than a Google document, um, as you can imagine. 
So up here, you've got uh, obviously the title, you've got sharing abilities, information about the project, you can actually add a description, and it gives you full text formatting. So I could say this is for an upcoming course. And uh, I can click off this and I can even give it a due date up here. So in this case, I actually do want to release it by the end of September. So that obviously updates and refreshes the information, especially when you're viewing the sort of progress side of stuff. So you can see here it's been created today. I've got the list view here. So here I can start adding sections. Um, they've given you a few templatized sections. And also you can add uh, new sections and add tasks up here. So I'll come back to that in a moment. You've also got the description on this right hand side, as well as a range of um, sorting abilities, filtering abilities, fields. Um, custom fields is locked under premium, just so you know. Um, but I think they give you a range of fields. So let's go to the boards view. The boards view is something that a lot of people like. This is very similar to Trello, allowing you to move stuff between the different statuses uh, of the task and helps you to visually plan. You've got timeline view, but it is locked under the premium because obviously it's a premium function, but this will allow you to plot your tasks in a more of a Gantt style view to help plan ahead. Now you do have calendar view if you're someone that's very visual, you can obviously uh, go through and we'll be showcasing how this works in a moment so don't worry um, you can obviously visually view your upcoming tasks now you can see here that at the bottom there uh, I've got a project due so it gives you a bit of an indication of when and how far you've got till the end and uh, the good thing is obviously you can skip to today if you need to and skip the different months up here now we'll come back to that now progress is available but uh, you can only set like i think the latest status for example like you can set it on track and a status update for your team but in terms of the insights uh, for example important milestones and what's been happening in more detail like complete overdue that's locked under premium um if you guys are interested i will probably do a premium tour of uh, asana so you can see here about the project, you can see the owner is myself. You can actually change that if you want to, to, for example, Alice, who we'll come to later um, in inviting stuff, um, and also the due date up here. Now, you've also got the ability to access forms, but this is, again, uh, locked under business. You've got conversations, which is something that you can actually access in uh, the greater sort of uh, workspace. So if I go up here, you can actually access the conversations per um, project or per general workspace up here um, and you get your own calendar view that spans across the different projects which is really helpful so let's go back into here now just to show you that final section you got files um, I will show you the how to upload a file and everything like that and I think it's right time to start organizing this so as you can imagine let's go ahead and uh, open a task up so a task is very simple as you can see, and it appears on this right-hand panel. Um, I always like the Sana if you're looking to like learn a bit more about how to utilize it in day-to-day -day use. Um, I'd recommend checking out Paul Miner's channel. I'll include that in the link in the description. He does some fantastic Asana content. I believe he actually has a course on it, um, which I'll include and make sure to uh, sort of reference. So creating a task is pretty easy. All you have to do is add a task title. In this case, it might be uh, to map the course content. Now, what I can do as well for each of these, very similar to most other tasks, is to assign it. And as you can see, an icon appears here uh, of the person who it's assigned to. You can give it a due date. I might want to set it for the 15th of August. And a little bit of a description. That's almost like your notes area. And you may be seeing down here that it's giving me a bit of like an outline of what's been happening in terms of like where this task has been moved and what's actually happening uh, in terms of activities like due dates change and obviously that will update as soon as um, for example Alice is getting involved in that project now you can from here actually add it to a section so once you create a section it will be listed here and you can start putting it in there so this might be actually relevant to the planning and you may see there that it actually moves uh, into the section of planning which is really helpful so that's another bonus now you have the ability to ask a question or post uh, any updates here and you can actually add followers. So for example, if you want, for example, if I want Alice to um, follow this sort of stuff, uh, all the updates on that, then you can see who's following and you can actually get notified whether you want to follow the task or not yourself. So you can actually add other people and remove yourself if you wanted to pass it over to someone else. 
Now up here, you've got the ability to add attachments. You can add it from a range of different integrations. I believe I have to connect them up in the settings area, um, but you actually have to connect with Dropbox, Google Drive box, or OneDrive or SharePoint, um, but you can upload from your uh, file PC. So let's uh, actually upload something uh, to demonstrate how that works. So here we are, I just uploaded like a really super old piece of work, but it gives you a good idea of how the PDF is attached and you can click in and the PDF will be viewable through uh, the web. So you can see here that it comes up as a separate web page. So going back into this area, what you can do is once a post is posted, <laughs> you can actually like it and also pin it to the top so you've got a sort of an idea of the um, importance of the message. You can also delete the story, they call them stories, very similar to Facebook, I guess, and you can see everything accessible here. Now you can go ahead and add more files from here, so it's not just one you can add, which is really, really useful. Now I'll include any limitations you have in the free account uh, that you can find um, in the description below. Now you do have subtasks. Now subtasks are really handy when it comes to breaking down a certain task into micro chunks, you can go ahead and actually start adding some. You can add due dates to them and uh, actually assign it to a person. And then you actually have the subtasks conversations uh, and details. So if you want to add, you know, for example, uh, you know, actually assign it to someone, add description and details about that certain thing, then you can do so. Um, and I believe you can add subtasks to a subtask. So you can go into a high level detail. You wanna go back, you just have to select that. One of the things that I noticed when I actually used uh, Asana a while ago, it hasn't changed dramatically, is when you go ahead and create this, you have to make sure to go inside here and select this and delete selected subtask. So that's one thing that you just have to do. Um, and I believe it should have gotten rid of it. Um, let's go ahead and get rid of it. There you go, delete uh, task. So you can go ahead and delete it permanently um, and then have to go back in. That's just something to note. Uh, maybe there's a better hack to doing it. So up here, you can also copy the task link. So if you wanted to send that in Slack or something else like that, you can do so. You can like the general post and also do a range of different things like duplicate it. Inside of the uh, premium, you can mark as a milestone. You can mark as the dependent on, which is handy for task dependencies. That is a premium feature only. You can add tags. Now tags are free to add. So for example, if I said this is a writing task, I could add one and I could even add the uh, sort of colorization, colorization. And you can see all the tasks that re relate to a certain tag if you were, for example, in a writing mode and you wanted to get into that. Now, you can also print, which is something I like, I know a lot of people like to do. You can also make a subtask off, convert it to a project, which is something that I know a lot of people like to do. For example, if they see that something's almost like, for example, they have loads of subtasks coming out of their ears and they just want to create it, convert it into a project, and that project would appear inside of here. So you can see there the project would land. Now going back into this, obviously that's pretty much the task abilities. When it comes to deleting stuff, you can do that and you can even full task, full screen the task. But when it comes to completing it, uh, all you have to do is go up to here and click mark as complete. And as you can see here, the completed task is added and uh, obviously, completed for the day. So that will, I believe it should appear uh, inside of the completed area. Um, but we'll come to that later so that I can show you how that works. So up here, you can actually change the assignee. So for example, if you wanted to see a certain person's tasks allocated, in this case, we're going to add a separate task for Alice and show you how that works. So I might want her to research success of to do courses online. And I'm going to assign it to her and I'm going to give it a due date of the 29th of August. So if I go up here now, I can switch between and it breaks down, which is quite nice. Um, a bit of an idea of who's got what to do and what the due date is. So this is quite nice. Like I like the icon appearing and uh, that's just a nice addition. If you want to go back to the view, you just have to press it again. And then you can go ahead and add a new section. So for example, if I wanted to modify this section, I could. But I'm actually going to show you maybe a better way of doing it. And we're going to go into the boards area. So you can see the same sections appear here up the top. And they're essentially created as columns. But if I wanted to edit that, so for example, I wanted to say, uh, call this one the plan stage. Um, and I wanted to call this one the research stage. 
uh, I could do that. And I, what I could do is I could actually move that because, for example, maybe I want the research to become before the planning, um, you know, actually take full advantage of that. And I want to go and change the due date. So I'm going to add it as the sixth of there. So as you can see, the date appears as relative now, which is really handy. But if I go back to that list view, everything should have changed. So you can see here that the research uh, appears here and the plan appears there. So whenever you make a modification to any of the different views, it will change on the other experiences, which is really handy. Now I'm going to go ahead and delete that task and I'm going to call this one the actual uh, recording because obviously the course uh, takes some recording time there. Now I'm going to go ahead and delete this column and that's really easy to do so. But all I need to do now is, for example, if there's a different change in status or I need to add a task, I can go ahead and add one here and that's really easy to do so. But the other thing is what I guess is quite important if you're finding value in the board system is you can set it up, for example, uh, to do doing and then done. And this is something that a lot of people actually like to use. They don't necessarily go to the list view because they don't necessarily want to see the progress of it and actually just be able to drag stuff across and use it like a Kanban board. So that is one of the other options that you do have. And there we go. You can see it in a bit of a neater fashion there. And if you just want to dock the sidebar, you can do so there. Now, what does this look like in calendar view? Because obviously calendar view is quite important. You want to be able to see what's coming up. Well, there you go. This is how it looks like. And you can click in and see this is almost like a, um, a task sort of preview and details. And there you can see anything with a, uh, a tag is actually detailed a bit more. So for example, if I might say, uh, I might give this one a tag of online research uh, or uh, online search searches. And I'm going to give it the tag color of a, a dark blue. So you can see a dark blue appears. So if you wanted to, for example, organize what you actually, you know, the color system, then that's a good way to do that. Now inside of here, you can um, change the colors. For example, here, you don't want the color to appear, then you can do. So that's just something to note. Now we'll actually go over all of these to make sure you fully understand it. But for example, let's say I wanted to go ahead and start some conversations about this. So I say, maybe I'll be like, okay, um, what time do you think the course should be, should be released? So uh, obviously you might want to start that conversation amongst your team members. You can say, you can tag people. So if I say, Alice, what are your thoughts? And uh, question mark. And you can do all the regular text formatting like bolding, you know, adding people, adding emojis. So in this case, I might just want to put a smiley face and add a file as well. So for example, I just go ahead and post that and that gets obviously wielded into the conversation and it can actually be referenced. So if I go back out of here, I should be able to see this in the conversation sections. Okay, that's that's something to note there, that you can't actually see uh, project conversations um, inside of this view. So you need to be, I guess that's a more of a security feature, you need to be in the conversations view of the project, but that's something that obviously uh, you can change. So naturally you can go out of here and start conversations for your team. You can also view stuff on the calendar. So as you can see here, the tasks that were inside of that project appear here. And that's particularly handy because you can see like the icon there. And if you create a secondary project, obviously the color would appear um, in, in view. And that's quite handy because if you have multiple projects, you can see them all in that calendar view. So let's go back into this project. Obviously I've now got a conversation rolling. I can see the files that I now have inside of my area. So these come across as big, uh, documents and I can click in and go and view them there. Okay, so let's just touch on a few of the benefits of the different areas. So the list view is something that a lot of people like if they traditionally come from a to-do list application. You can utilize this function so you won't see incomplete tasks. And as I said, you can see the, all the completed tasks for the day. So if I went to incomplete tasks and ticked my map, the content course, course content, then I can go and see anything that's completed today, for example, uh, or anything that's completed in the next three, in the last three weeks and all completed tasks to date. Now, if I want to see all of them in, in this sort of like no hide completed task view, I can go to there and choose that option. I've also got the filter so I can see do this week, do next week and choose a, choose a custom filter 
Parasigny, for example, but this is obviously very limited. I think you get more options when you're in the other plans. Now, let me just untick that and go on to the incomplete tasks view. Let's say I wanted to sort this based on the due date or even a signy or how many likes it's got or the alphabetical order. I could do that there and obviously that appears in line. Now, when it comes to fields, fields is a premium function, as I said, I didn't think you were able to add, but if you're allowed to add custom fields and that really can help you to improve, this is something that's available in Trello um, and you can obviously um, you know, utilize the properties there to add more context to each of your tasks. So in terms of the other views, you can save the layout as a default. Um, but aside from that, that's the list view. The list view is actually really handy for those coming from a, a, a more of a task management uh, application. So as you can see here, this is the board view. This is one of the views that a lot of people typically use as a way to organize their tasks. People like it because you can drag between the statuses and you can even modify stuff without actually going into the task. And you've got a range of different abilities there, pretty much the same abilities as you had in list view. Now for the calendar view, there are some abilities, for example, skip into today. I can also change the color options as well and select whether I have weekends on or off. Some people do like to have weekends on. What I particularly like about the calendar view is the ability to move stuff between dates. So if you're looking to quickly manage, you know, oh, oh no, something's happened. I'll move everything one day forward or, you know, oh no, I'm going on holiday next week. I can move stuff around. That's quite a nice addition of it. And as you can see, if you open up, you can see that the due date obviously is logged, for example, when it was changed and stuff like that. So that is the calendar view. And that's pretty much everything in terms of the projects. If I go to share, I can add a range of different sharing abilities. So this, you can go and copy the project link. You can invite who has access and uh, who has ownership as well. And what messages you get, for example, like whether you get status updates, conversations. Some people don't like their emails being bombarded. Um, you can only have can edit access on inside of free. So that means they can edit, add and delete anything in the project, but they can't comment. Um, so the team can comment, but can't edit anything. So you can have comment only access if you wanted, for example, input from another members of the team. So up here, you can also search your tasks, any tasks I've created. So if I was like, okay, I'm going to search universally what tasks I've created. I can see that and I can also see it in calendar view, which is quite nice. I can uh, go to, for example, I know these are premium locked, but that's pretty much all you get. You get advanced search inside of premium. Um, and if you want to upgrade, there's an upgrade button, which gives you all the information you need to know uh, about these. Uh, and I'll include those in the link in the description. Okay, so let's look at the settings before we move on. So you go to profile settings. You can obviously upload a photo. You can add your full name. You can add the pronouns that you want to actually choose, which is a good option, I guess, uh, if you want to use that. Um, you've also got role and department. you got about me, and you can show someone as a way for a certain period. So, for example, I'm like, okay, I'm on holiday between these dates. So I can go ahead and save the changes. I can modify the email notification settings, whether there's any email forwarding. And if I create any tasks through that email, then it goes and, for example, any conversations can be looped in. So, for example, if I copy that email address, um, any tasks or conversations will go straight into Dototech, but I can change that to keep productive. So I can go to account and see the workspaces I'm actually access to. I can go in security, deactivation. I can change the uh, look that I have for my account. So if I wanted it to be a bit more customized, um, I can change it. So these are basically themes to some extent. I can actually add the apps, apps that I have set up on. So for example, you can authorize app access. For example, I did that for Notion when I was exporting stuff, not for my own experience, but um, actually just for demonstration. But you've got available apps and they have hundreds of apps that you can use. Now there are hacks. These are experimental experiences that you can use. Um, inbox snooze, extra delight, you know, celebrations when you do stuff and you can turn them on or off. Uh, and you can reload, you have to reload it to apply it to your account. Um, but this is really neat because whenever you celebrate, like for example, celebrate something, a unicorn appears on the screen. It's very cool. So that's in terms of like a project management experience for the Asana account. But there are some other abilities, for example, up here, if you're using it for yourself, 
um, or part of many projects and you can go to my tasks and actually see an outline of what you've got today, upcoming and, and later. And they will be filtered into calendar view. And also, for example, if I had this one available, so I can mark that one as incomplete. If I go to my view there, I can see all the tasks there. And uh, I can mark this for upcoming if I wanted to. Uh, so I can mark as upcoming. And there we go, it goes into a different section. Uh, and you can view it in calendar and uh, file view too. So if I go to inbox, I can see any tasks that I've got coming in. For example, okay, here's activity. So I can actually remove that activity and, and it seems like I'm all up to date. But you've also got an archive, so you can see all of the activities that happened. So portfolios is something available in the business plan, but of course you can go ahead and favorite things. So if I were to go to this project and press the star button, I can go ahead and favorite it, which essentially just pins it to the top. Now, as I said, I wanted to demonstrate what an active sort of working one. This is one we use to plan the Notion course. So Steve invited me to this um, area and naturally I can go inside of it and I can see all of the progress that has been made. So for example, we used a very simple to do in progress done and drag stuff between there. Now this was the most used uh, sort of layout. So obviously this would change here, um, but it actually helped us plan uh, all of the completed items. So you can get to get an idea of sort of what happens with each of them. So in this case, uh, launch webinars. So you can see here that all of our sort of links and conversations happened here. Um, and if I go to this Dotto Tech view, obviously, um, you know, other people's access is there to the account and I can go and see my tasks only. In this case, that was completed. So as you're probably wondering, who is this most suitable for? Now Asana, I'd say is a really strong project management software, but I'd say it's almost like the, uh, what Todoist is for the space inside of task management. It's sort of that middle ground. It is an application that allows you to plan projects, coordinate uh, in different views, which is quite nice. But it's a very traditional project management application. And this is why it's used so widely because it's just a very good middle ground application. It's not a specialist application and it does do a lot of f things for free users as well, which is great. And I normally always recommend it for small teams that are getting started um, as a free solution to get them going. But as you can imagine, it really not doesn't have like too many special abilities, although well, they are locked under their premium and business account. Um, like many other applications, but what I would say is it's a good, strong middle ground application. And I definitely recommend it for those teams that are up to say 50 and above say three as a way to plan. Like for example, this one for Steve uses it. Um, he invited me and we got going instantly. Like it was really fast and we could see everything on calendar view, on board view and sort of plan without any hassle. So there was, it was a pretty streamlined. I checked it every day to see what conversations were going on, what I needed to do, and I found it really valuable. Anyway guys, I really appreciate you stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this Asana overview. Please do subscribe to the Keep Productive YouTube channel. Check out the links in the description. And I just want to say a huge thank you for stopping by. We do more videos like this, so we're going to be touching on more project management applications. So do stay tuned. Thank you so much guys. I will talk to you in a future video. Cheers everyone.